allow us to show you Michael Patron now. Where is Quadrica CX's co-founder? As you likely know by now, the world of crypto is not one to be taken lightly. It's one that is deep, complex, confusing, and so much more. And because of many people being eager to try it out, that also means that people are eager to scam others out of their crypto cash and coin in order to line their own pockets. That has led to many different things over the years, not the least of which is the story of Michael Patron, who was one of such person of interest that even got Netflix attention. Trust no one. Netflix's Trust No One, The Hunt for the Crypto King, chronicles the fallout of Gerald Cotton's death in December of 2018. As the CEO of Quadrica CX, it turned out that the access to millions of the customer's money in cryptocurrency died with him. This resulted in a huge uproar and an extensive investigation into Jerry's practices as well as his past associates. Soon, Quadrica's co-founder Michael Patron's history became a point of contention. And it's not hard to see why, because no matter how you slice it, when a major scandal like this happens, it's not just the top guy that goes down. It falls onto everyone and anyone who might have known about the things that were going on. Sure, there have been times when higher-ups and associates know nothing of what was happening, but with Michael Patron, that doesn't seem to be the case. Michael Patron. Michael first got in touch with a group of cryptocurrency investors called Bitcoin Co-op in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. At the time, he reached out to the group, telling them about his idea to build a Bitcoin exchange. Michael eventually teamed up with Jerry, but many noted they were an odd pairing. In 2013, with Jerry being three years out of college, he started Quadrica and Michael was the co-founder, funding the project. However, Michael left the company in 2016 after disagreements regarding the company going public. At the time that Jerry suddenly died, Michael was still one of Quadrica's largest shareholders, in addition to his partner, Lovey Horner. Soon, it was reported that Michael had a rather shady past with a criminal history in the United States dating back to the 2000s. A man named Omar Danani served time in federal prison back in 2005 for identity theft. It was believed that Michael and Omar were one and the same. Cue dramatic music. Shadow Crew. In 2002, Omar was a member of a website called Shadow Crew. This website served as a place for people to traffic stolen credit card information and bank card numbers. By using different names, Omar provided electric money laundering services and took a 10% cut. Then, about 20 years old, he was arrested in 2004 and was sentenced to 18 months in prison after pleading guilty to conspiracy to commit fraud. Omar was released in May 2007, but then pled guilty to burglary and grand theft auto about a month later. He was then deported to Canada. While Michael denied being Omar, official documents appeared to link both the names. One of Omar's aliases was Omar Patron. After Jerry died in 2018, many of Quadrica's CX's customers started a telegram group that aimed to investigate what happened. At one point, Michael joined the group and seemed to play down his involvement with the company. Nevertheless, some group members went to extraordinary measures to scour the internet to find out more about Michael and Jerry. Their relationship seemingly began in 2003 on a website called Talk Gold, dedicated to Ponzi schemes. Both were regulars and pulled off these scams and posed as each other satisfied customers against actual angry investors. Michael was linked to a digital currency business called Midas Gold that served as a processor for Liberty Reserve, a type of digital currency. This was used by many of various dubious natures and professions in order to launder money. So yeah, not good at all. And he's where now? It seems that Michael is still active in digital currency trading. In January 2022, it was reported that Oxifu, the treasury head of Wonderland, a decentralized finance project, was, in fact, Michael. The controversy resulted in the related tokens dropping in value. The co-founder, Daniel Sestigali, appeared to acknowledge Oxifu's identity and announced later that Michael had stepped down from his role. Apart from that, Michael is kept away from social media and seems to have closely guarded his whereabouts. However, in an interview in 2019, he mentioned staying in Thailand and then traveling to Hong Kong. The January Scandal A decentralized finance project called Wonderland was rocked by controversy following the disclosure that it was being run in part by a felon with ties to one of the biggest cryptocurrency scandals. 
tokens related to the protocol that runs on several blockchains, including Avalanche, one of the larger community-governed DeFi applications since its launch in September, tumbled in value. Co-founder Daniel Sestigali said that Thursday that he asked Wonderland's treasury head, who goes by the pseudonym Saifu or Oxifu, to step down. It should be noted that the only reason this was exposed was because of an anonymous Twitter user. Yeah, so if that didn't happen, a certain someone, Michael Patron, would still be working and possibly scamming even more people. The fiasco is another example of how investors in loosely organized and under-regulated corners of the crypto market are being forced to reckon with growing pains as the industry matures. It also signals more headaches for the world of DeFi, which largely operates under a cloak of anonymity while facing increasing attention from regulators. Aaron Lammer, a member of the DeFi team at crypto prop trading firm Radical and host of the podcast Exit Scam about the Quadrica debacle, said the community found it shocking that Sestigali had known about Saifu's identity without changing tack. This is news to me, but this was not news to him and he chose to continue doing business with this person, Lammer said. It means that as time unraveled, Danny was aware that the person in charge of the treasury was a convicted financial criminal who spent time in prison. So yeah, this wasn't the best look for crypto at all. But sadly, it's one of the many schemes that have been revealed over the years, including ones with names you might not have expected. The celebrity crypto scam. In short, Kim Kardashian, Floyd Mayweather, and Paul Pierce were sued for allegedly duping investors in a cryptocurrency scam. The lawsuit, which accuses the stars of misleading their followers in a pump-and-dump scheme, claims the celebrities convinced their fans to buy Ethereum Max tokens, only to sell them once their value was inflated. They were allegedly paid in tokens for their sponsorships and exited with substantial gains, leaving investors holding the bag, the lawsuit claims. Defendants touted the prospects of the company and the ability for investors to make significant returns due to the favorable tokenomics of the Emax tokens reads the lawsuit filed in California federal court. In truth, defendants marketed the Emax tokens to investors so that they could sell their portion of the float for a profit. If this is going over your head, we'll simplify it for you. Basically, these celebs were brought in to promote a specific brand of cryptocurrency. They were paid in that crypto and then had their fans invest in it. The more people that invested, the higher the value of the crypto. Then when it got high enough for them, the celebs, they sold the crypto at its peak, and when they did that, they got paid real money, but dropped the value of the coin as a whole, leaving people invested in something that was essentially worthless. And they say celebrities are above such things and wouldn't trick their fans into anything untoward. Crypto scams as a whole. Regardless of whether it's Michael Patron, Kim K, or someone you don't even know yet, the fact of the matter is that scams in crypto are here to stay. And that's why, with the market trying to expand in various ways, including weird ones like NFTs, you need to be very careful about where you invest, how you invest, and so on. This isn't just about keeping you safe, it's about limiting how many successful scams are out there. As you've seen with Patron, he didn't stay in one scam and then bow out. He left one to go and help with potentially another. So as things try to get more stable, if that's even possible in the crypto world, be mindful of what's happening and how much you yourself invest in it. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at Michael Patron and how he became a rather infamous person in the world of crypto and beyond? Can you believe that people like him are able to scam others in such an easy way and thus take all the money they invested? Do you think that there are many more like him out there right now? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on the channel.